Hi everybody, Brian Balric with Roland DGA in Irvine, California, here with another video. Very, very exciting today. We are launching a new feature for VersaWorks. Uh, it's in the new version 6.7. It's called Job Assistant. So with this, we really are increasing your productivity by allowing you to stay within the VersaWorks um, system and edit and create cut line data that may have been missing. It may require slight modification, but if you can imagine all of those times that you receive data from clients, uh, customers, and simply it's not quite ready for prime time, it's, it's got some problems, and inevitably that's going to stop your workflow completely. You'll have to exit out of the application, start a new application. Hopefully you've got the right application to edit the file in the first place, make the edits, kind of read the customer's mind to figure out what they want, not being sure because they didn't send a target, make a couple edits, try and save those, test them again in VersaWorks and try to keep your, 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 your business running. Well, we're making that a lot simpler. So we're really excited to um, include this brand new feature within our VersaWorks, still very free of charge. It comes with our machinery. Um, but again, it's a big, big benefit. So we're really excited to show it to you today. A couple of caveats, you're going to need the latest version. And again, that's 6.7. And that is available for upgrade download. Uh, it basically whatever, as long as you've got a qualifying version of, of VersaWorks and a product of ours that qualifies for VersaWorks, it is free to download from the website. So um, make sure you've got the latest version. The way to check for that, let's go up to the help, which is at the very top. Let's go to about. And you'll see here I've got uh, version one, uh, VersaWorks version 6.7.1. So that is the latest version. Um, after you've done that, uh, basically you need a data that qualifies. So qualifying data to work with Job Assistant. You have to have it as a PDF file. And that PDF file has to be in vector format. So I've done a previous video. Uh, you can go ahead and, and, and pull that up and, and get a little more background on what the difference is between raster and vector data. Um, but regardless, you're going to need to have these as a PDF and vector based. With those two caveats, uh, you can use Job Assistant. So I've got one of those types of files loaded here. Uh, it's just a simple project. But if I right click, uh, you will see third item down is the new Job Assistant. So normally, you know, we would just double click this to, to basically uh, get to the uh, job setting window. So I'll pull this up and make our basic edit. So this is, you know, this is everything you're used to. And remember, the only thing that we had available in VersaWorks prior to this, a little bit of a history lesson. So if you wanted to add cutting data at all with our, with our RIP, the only thing we had available to you was called uh, border uh, image boundary cut. So right here, it's a uh, first item at the very top. So if this was our item and it came from a client, it had no cutting data, you could click on the item and then simply say, give me the cut image boundary. And all it did was it looked for the extent, the absolute outer boundary of the active artwork and created a rectangle. That was it. You couldn't modify the shape, couldn't make any changes, but that's all you could do previously. And about the only other little side note is you could change it from a regular cut line to a perf cut. But that's about it. Other than that, we had the ability to um, do the cut all paths, which again, I've done a previous video on and you can refresh yourself on that one. It's unique and a great benefit, but again, zero editing capability. It's simp All that did was basically say any incoming vector based data where it could recognize the shapes, it would make every single path, every single path cut. So in this case, every single letter of the word um, down at the base would actually cut as an individual letter. Again, that, that may not be what you wanted, but you have no control over that. That's all we gave you the ability to do. So those two or three little minor um, tools were available to you previously, but let's take a look at what you can do now. So with this file loaded, let's go ahead and right click and go to Job Assistant. All right, so let's say with Job Assistant open, you see we've got a brand new graphical user interface. Um, it's point and click, nice GUI. I'm going to use the slider in the upper right. You'll see right away we've given you some tools for changing the view on the screen. 
If you hover, it's going to give you always a little fly out to tell you what your uh, tool is going to do. Um, so we got this nice and big on the screen. So let's say that this is your, <laughs> this is your typical. So you, you're working with a client, you're all excited. He's asked for some print cut labels and this is what you get. Well, we've got a small problem. There's no cut data. It happens quite often. So you're left with the task again of having to exit, stop your workflow, go out and, and start editing and start testing and try to get to a point where you're happy with what you're going to get print and cut wise. But let's see what we can do now. Uh, with Job Assistant, you see in the upper left, we've got the page view. So if you have multiple pages within a PDF, you just select the page you want to work with. Let's go down to the next one down, which is the cutting line tool. This is where all the magic happens. This is where all the exciting stuff is. So at the very top is your editing method. You've got create cutting line, draw cutting line, replace with cutting line, and then merge multiple cutting lines. So just real quick, let's, let's kick off with replace cutting line. So let's take this first object. Notice, click. I'm working in a, just a, a, basically an editor window. So I can point and click on objects now. Just notice as I move around, we're looking at on all these different items here, we have full control. So let's start with the broom symbol. And I've got the replace with cutting line, so just as it sounds. I, want the, I really want the object gone, and just what's left is a cut line representation of its shape. So let's go ahead and change this to offset zero. And we'll say, you know, type of contours, outline, miter shape, no miter limit, zero offset, replace. Boom. How, how cool is that? Seriously, we didn't have to leave the, the program. I chose the object and simply asked it to replace what was there, get rid of the original artwork, and simply give me a cut in representation of where it was. Faithful to its shape. How cool is that? All right, so next, let's go ahead and undo. So you have two options. We can either go to the upper um, left-hand facing tool, which is the undo, or I can just hit Control Z on the keyboard and notice, boom, we've undone. All right, so let's move to another tool. Let's go to create cutting line. This is always so cool. So we're gonna create a cutting line. First choice, we have a choice of a regular cut or a perforated cut. We do give you the option, it's really nice. So I'm gonna work with a regular cut. As you know, that's the knife falling going into position, dragging while it's completely staying down, and then getting to its start point, picking up and closing that path, and then picking up again. That's a complete path. Perf cut, as you know, it runs around, and as it moves with a, a pre-designed uh, distance, it lifts slightly, leaving a very small gap of uncut material, dropping again, and doing that continually all the way around, leaving the print cut graphic as integral, integrally part of the material, yet and able to continue and print and cut and do all these things while it stays part of the base material. But when you're done, you have the ability to push a little harder on it and it pops it out. So literally piercing both the vinyl and the underlying uh, carrier sheet, the silicone paper. So you literally have a finished item that is print and cut popped out into custom shapes. So it's a great, great feature. But again, I just need a regular cut. Let's just say we're cutting this uh, as a label. You choose the type of contour, just a basic outline. Uh, we want to ignore the interior, so do not cut the interior as an option. And this looks good, and I'll just say create. So this time, just like you expect, it's leaving the original artwork, but it's, in, it's including a cut line representation. Now I can change the offset, so I'm gonna hit undo. And we can start basically moving that um, away from the outer boundary by this amount, let's say 0.2 inches. So we'll click on the red broom and hit create. So there you go. Notice though that we didn't change our miter limits. So it noticed the, the broom symbol, but it created an offset shape that goes far too out, outside the boundary. So let's undo that and let's go ahead and use a rounded corner. So again, it's same concept, but instead of following shapes that have sharp corners, it will automatically create a contour. So let's go ahead and do that, a point two, and we'll create. So there you go. So just a nicely beautiful sculpted edge around the corners instead of the sharp miter edge. So I'll hit undo again. But I mean, seriously, we're not outside of, of uh, Verseworks. We're doing this all within our application. And I'm, I can keep going here fast and get this job complete really quick. 
So let's do um, a fun exercise. So let's, let's go ahead and we're going to do regular outline. Uh, do not look for the interior. We're going to do um, a miter edge. Uh, we're going to turn the miter limit on so we don't get that artifacting where it jumps too far away from the original artwork. And we're going to, you know, put this to a slightly increased uh, angle. So again, a miter limitation. So it, it, it's, it's at your choice of either leaving the mitering to go longer or shorter. So larger or smaller. So I'm going to pull it to a little bit towards the large edge. And I'm going to change this to, let's say, 0.4. And we're going to use this broom symbol and we'll say create. So there's our first shape. So we'll go to the second shape. It's a little smaller than the other two, this um, paintbrush. And we'll say create it at 0.4, another nice shape. Let's go up to the upper right and we'll change this to 0.2. And we'll say create, nice. And the last one, uh, the roller brush, and we'll say 0.2 create, awesome. And then finally, let's go ahead and take that lower block. And I'm just going to use the, the uh, other tool up top, which is called draw cutting tool. So let's go ahead and draw a shape. So again, we want a regular cut. We want a box, so a, just a rectangle. Say draw. It creates it on the screen for you. Now you're free to move it into position and then change its shape. So I'm just going to carry it around the text below. Nice. Last but not least, obviously this is not going to work. Uh, we have overlapping line segments that will cut into each other. We don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and with my shift key, we're going to check each one of these upper pieces of art one by one. So until we are, we've gathered all of them together. Again, I held my shift key down that, in, that include adds each of these shapes. So notice I have all of the outer cut, the new cut data selected, and I simply hit the merge cutting lines and I click on merge. Again, seriously, didn't leave VersaWorks. I cannot tell you how many times a day I deal with artwork that just needs some cut data. You know, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to do super intricate. I just want to be able to keep going and keep my job flow working. But seriously, once we've done this, uh, I'll use this as an example. Let's say we're done. This is, the, this is how I want to test this. I might send it off to the client, take a quick picture after it's been print and cut, get an approval. Um, so let's click OK. This will actually ask me first if we want to commit this to the queue. We'll say yes. Notice that what happens is a brand new file with the same name gets added to your queue. Now, if we double click that, and I'm going to rotate it to view correctly and then fit to window. There's your shape. You've got basically the original artwork and a brand new cut boundary set around it, a print cut label, just as the client had asked. So obviously, you know, there's other options we have. So let's go ahead and just do a couple iterations. So let's go back to the original artwork, right click job assistant. Let's grow this screen again and zoom it up. I'm going to basically just make a couple of different alterations and we'll choose from those and pick the most uh, attractive one. All right, so let's go back and we're going to do a version two. So let's go ahead and draw some shapes. Um, I'll, I'll do that same thing I was doing before. I'll start with a rectangle and drag that into position. I'm just going to put that around the text block down below. So drag that into shape. And then up top, we'll just do something a little different. We'll just do a simple circle. So let's draw that. And we'll drag that circle up into the upper left and then drag it. Uh, let's see, we'll grow its shape a bit. And notice I can just not use this constraining key of shift and just extend the uh, boundary so that it's an ellipse. So we can distort the shape of anything. So uh, hit Control Z, go back to a circle. And then this time I'll actually hold the shift key down to constrain it into a circle and we'll just grow it. So there we got our circle and I'll just drag it into the position I feel is appropriate. I think that's about right. I'm trying to be equidistant around the edges. I like that. And then finally, we'll go to the merge tool. We'll right click on that lower boundary box for the text and we will click merge. Again, I, I like that. Let's go ahead and commit that. So we'll say, okay, job has changed. Are you sure you want to commit? I do. And it adds another job to the queue. Open this one up. And we will do a right reading and fit to view. And there you go. I mean, seriously, 
how many <laughs> how many times do I have to deal with uh, files and have to create cut lines? And now I've got the tool to do so. So I, as you can see, I'm just super, super crazy excited about this. It's such a benefit. Um, you know, before I close out, I just want to give you one more tip. So if you go up to your help, um, obviously, when you, anytime you use a new tool, you've got lots of questions. You may not be sure of exactly how the uh, tools are working. Uh, so if you have questions, I'm going to show you a really great way to, to check and understand a little more about the RIP. So let's go up to show help. This is right within Bursaworks it's at the very top under help. And that invokes its own help screen. We're just going to under search type in job assistant and hit return. Boom. Right here, uh, item number one, editing cutting lines. So click that. And it seriously is such a nice explanation of how the job assistant is set up. So we'll go, come down here and an explanation of the type of cut, regular cut, perforated cut, type of contour. So you notice along that top, I had several options. We have the outline, we have the clipped outline and the bounding box. Really interesting if you read here what the difference would be bef between just outline and clipped outline. All it is, is it's respecting the page boundary and the clipping box that might clip a piece of artwork. One ignores the bounding area or the clipped area. The other one respects it. And that's just the difference between them. But this visual representation is a perfect example of how that works. You can see in the top one where the um, cut line continues outward beyond what is the clipped boundary. And below where you see it's actually respected it and it sees where that clip boundary is and it says, okay, I'll respect that and follow that instead. So again, very nice that they give you that option. And again, that last one, bounding box, disregard the actual shape, just look at the artboard that defines it and put the cut data around that. So down here, we'll continue on. You see cut interior. So taking a look, you can uh, respect the interior shapes and, and they're active and will be traced and used for cutting data or do not cut interior, we'll ignore them and just completely disregard them. So if you keep coming down here, you'll see the difference between a miter, a round edge and a bevel edge. And then below that, miter limit. That Remember that miter checkbox and then also the slider that said small to large. You can see this explanation does a good job of visually showing you can see where that continuation of the peak just goes forever and it's too far. It's, it's, it doesn't look right. It's not really respecting the art and it's going to look a little odd. So your better bet more artistically is to, to basically truncate that and they call it a chamfer where they bring that, that tip down to, to, a, you know, basically a smaller area. So that might work better for you, but it's a nice to have that feature and you have the ability to slide between small and large. So there you go. You could click the back button. And again, you've got many options here to, le to read and to research how the job assistant might benefit you the best. So there you have it. Job assistant, fantastic new feature, free of charge. If you haven't downloaded 6.7, by all means, please do so and, and have fun. This is a great new tool. A lot of options in there, a lot of great ways that you can save time and keep your productivity working and going. I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to seeing you in another Roland video in the future. Thank you very much.